My name is Ernie Bach, Jr., and I am President and CEO of Subaru of New England. And I am proud to be in the great state of Vermont. I have a house in Vermont. I have a house in Menden, Vermont. I love it. It's fantastic. Subaru is dedicated to Vermont. The most Subarus sold per capita in the world is Vermont, with 15% penetration. We have been selling the second largest amount of Subarus for the last 15 years. Subaru in Vermont is the second best-selling car. The only manufacturer that beats Subaru in Vermont is Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting close, and we want to uh, show our commitment to Vermont. And to show the commitment to the Vermont, I'm going to introduce a gentleman who um, I've known over the years. He's a, he's a good guy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor Scott. I thought he was going to introduce someone else. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Ernie, and uh, I want to express my sincere appreciation to you and Subaru of New England for your commitment to our beautiful state and willingness to step up to help in our time of need. This incredibly generous contribution that we're, he hasn't announced yet, uh, but I will, uh, will help support a wide range of Vermonters who were hard hit by catastrophic flooding. It will also keep Vermont the clean and beautiful place we know and love and as we welcome visitors to support our economy and communities. This, uh, this will be a $250,000 contribution uh, that is going to be <laughs> this uh, this incredibly again uh, generous contribution of two hundred fifty thousand dollars is going to be impactful in so many ways. First, we'll be using the hundred thousand dollars of it to support the fall version of Green Up Day. And we're going, we're going to call it Flood Recovery Cleanup Day, which will be Saturday, August 26th. And more on that in a few minutes. Second, another 100,000 will go to support those who live in mobile homes impacted by flooding. We're working out the final details of the program, but when I told Ernie about the situation some mobile homeowners were in due to flooding, he agreed with me that no Vermonter whose mobile home was destroyed should have to pay for the deconstruction and removal of it, which would add insult to injury. And this contribution will cover those costs, and if there's any funds left over, we'll issue grants to help those in further need. Third, the remaining 50000 will go toward the Vermont Strong License Plate Fund which will also support businesses and individuals impacted by flooding. A little bit of news on the plates. We expect the website to go live by the end of next week, so you'll be able to order Vermont Strong plates very soon, so stay tuned. Next, we'll hear from Kate Alberghini, the Executive Director of Green Up, uh, Green Up Vermont, who will go into further details about August 26. To be clear, the state will continue to work with the communities to remove flood debris, and in fact, we've already removed 5,700 tons to date, and still counting. Wow. And when you do the math, that's a lot. That's 11,700 pounds, 11 million 700,000 pounds of debris. Cleanup, uh, cleanup day on Saturday the 26th will be another opportunity for Vermonters to help communities get back to normal. 
It will be similar to Green Up Day with Ernie and Subaru of New, of New England have supported, which they have supported over many, many years. After Tropical Storm Irene, there are many who canceled their trips to Vermont, as you might recall, and decided to vacation elsewhere. We want to prevent that from happening this year. We know much of Vermont relies on tourism to support our local economy. So Clean Up Today will help make sure we continue to be the most beautiful state in the nation and show that we're open for business and ready to welcome people back to our state, which will help us get back on track. So again, I want to thank Ernie and everyone at Subaru of New England and all the dealers here in, uh, in Vermont that are represented. I think there are seven there's, at this point. There's, there's eight, okay. but I got to tell you, this program that you developed with the money is amazing. And we were talking about how the schools ha have, have problems sometimes funding music programs. What I would like to do right now is add another $100,000 to the music programs and the art programs in the state of Vermont. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> Well, again, that's incredibly generous and a very, very much welcome surprise, uh, something that we hadn't talked about. Uh, but we have a few other issues we need to talk about as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll keep on talking. <laughs> um, again, I want to thank you, Ernie, and uh, your entire team here in Vermont for all you've done to support us in our time of need. And um, this is going to be a long road. Uh, this isn't going to be... Uh, we're not going to recover overnight, uh, but with your help and the support of many Vermonters, we'll get through it. Because we work together, we'll get through it together. So thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. So at this point, I'd like to welcome you up to explain the program. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Scott all the support that everyone gives Green Up and certainly Mr. Bach and the Subaru of New England team. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, I am pleased to stand here and tell you about this special flood recovery cleanup that Green Up Vermont and Subaru of New England and all cities and towns have teamed together to make happen on Saturday, August 26th. What we're doing basically is reaching out to all cities and towns throughout Vermont and seeing who needs assistance in their public spaces to clean up litter, uh, flood litter that has leached into their, their areas. Roadsides, parks, waterways that are safe to uh, go into right now will all be part of this program. We are reaching out then to attract volunteers and build teams around these locations throughout Vermont so that people can go to a location near them, know what's expected, be boots on the ground, and get these areas cleaned up in time for our fall visitors and our winter visitors to arrive. Vermonters are steeped in pride for this state and our clean environment our natural landscapes that we all get to live, work, and play in. So it's a very important to um, take the initiative on, make this happen, and get Vermont cleaned up in time for the fall. People should... <laughs> Towns and cities should contact Green Up Vermont uh, through our email, Green Up Vermont, uh, greenup at greenupvermont.org, as well as call uh, the numbers that are on the website. So we ask, please visit the website, reach out. Volunteers are also asked to visit the website. Uh, have a look at the towns that are in need of your hands and um, help and sign up. We have a Green Up Vermont app that can be downloaded and that app will allow towns to be able to con um, be in contact with the team members 
immediately so that details can change on a dime and people can be directed in the proper areas. So all that can be found on greenupvermont.org and we look forward to getting out there on Saturday, August 26th and cleaning up Vermont. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much, Kate. And it's going to be very important for us, tight time frame. We know that about 10 days away. And uh, so we'll need all your support from the media to get the word out uh, what we're doing here and any questions uh, get to uh, Green Up uh, Vermont. Uh, to, uh, to get those answered, and we'll do the best we can to get this, uh, this rolling. Um, I just wanted to, again, that was a complete surprise to me, the 100,000 uh, for the music programs you know, throughout Vermont, and we'll figure out how to disperse all that, uh, that money. Uh, but it was just as a result of Ernie saying, um, what can we do uh, to help in, uh, in the arts and with some of the learning loss and socialization uh, loss uh, that, uh, that Vermont kids have experienced uh, due to the pandemic. And I said, well, they're, they're always underfunded, especially the music programs and arts and theater and so forth. And he said, well, I might do something about that in about five minutes. Uh, so again, complete surprise to me. But uh, giving a little background, uh, Ernie uh, graduated from Berkeley uh, and, uh, and actually had a band. It was called the Ernie and the Automatics. And uh, I was telling my press uh, secretary yesterday uh, that, uh, that Ernie actually opened up for Deep Purple. And he said, Deep what? <laughs> <laughs> as I'm sure some others in the group here uh, might be saying as well. Uh, but they were a pretty famous band at one time, you know, maybe a few years ago. Uh, but, uh, but his love of music and his love of Vermont uh, came uh, to, uh, to fruition for us, and uh, this is incredibly generous, and I thank you so much for that. With that, I'm sure you have some questions uh, for us, either Kate um, or Ernie or myself, uh, on anything we're doing today or anything we announced. Governor, can you repeat, did you say $100,000 of Ernie's donation is going to go toward Green Up Day? $100,000 will go towards um, the mobile home, those affected uh, by the flooding, yes. But it could be, so it'll be cleanup day. Some of it will go towards cleanup day um, as well. But the mobile home deconstruction will come first out of the 100,000, uh, and then from there, there'll be other grants available. So same with the cleanup day of Vermont. That'll go towards the day itself, and then we'll determine what we can do if there's anything left over. Uh, we'll determine where we go with that and uh, make sure that we continue to beautify Vermont in any way we can. Anything you want to add to that, Pete? Governor, where can we stand on some of the mobile homes for folks that uh, are currently uh, displaced right now? A few weeks ago you mentioned uh, maybe bringing in units from, from the federal government. Where do we stand? Yeah, we're still uh, contemplating that and I might ask Will, is Will here? I might ask Will to describe some of what uh, FEMA will offer in that regard, uh, but, uh, but first we have to get the, in, in some respects, get the uh, deconstruction of those, that, the, the mobile homes that were condemned uh, and um, unable to be returned to, taken care of. Uh, but we have some options for those who've been displaced uh, they have uh, have available a number of programs, and I'll let uh, General Roy talk about that. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Um, so for the families that are currently displaced, um, they are authorized rental assistance. Uh, so they, you know, they've found a place to go, or they're with friends and family, not sure where. Uh, the state of Vermont has requested uh, direct housing from FEMA. Uh, we're awaiting word from, from headquarters of whether that's, whether that's approved or not. That program uh, allows us to provide assistance when there isn't uh, rental uh, stock available. And we know Vermont has a very tight uh, market for, for rentals. Uh, but currently, uh, anybody who has been affected by, their home has been affected by the storm uh, has rental assistance. I think there's over a thousand people right now who are receiving rental assistance from uh, from FEMA, and so and they have that available up to 18 months. Um, so those who have been impacted 
uh, have, a, have the funding available. Um, if we run into short stockage uh, for places to go, that's where we typically bring in uh, the FEMA trailers, which are, are, are well known, and we'll work with the state uh, on appropriate locations, uh, states and individuals on uh, locations to go. In some cases, we can, if they have a, a flooded home and they have a location that's not in a floodplain we, and it has access to, to sewer and uh, electrical, we can place a unit there. Uh, so we'll work closely with, with the governor and the communities and individuals on, on appropriate locations if that becomes part of the solution. And what do you see as the timeline on when FEMA might take that determination? I mean, it's going to get chilly yes, sir. soon enough. We, so we expect we within the next week we'll have an answer from, from headquarters. General, after the, the Maui fires, uh, FEMA came out with a top line number of what it thought the damage was from that disaster. We haven't really heard a top line number yet out of FEMA about what you think the flooding, or have I missed it? Uh, um, so we've discussed before, you know, looking at the total number of people who have been impacted by that, what will happen is uh, we continue to work with them on a rental assistance. And that's really the, what's fulfilling the need right now for those who have been displaced from their homes. Um, and as I mentioned, there's over a thousand people right now who are receiving rental assistance. Now, what we don't know is, is you can still stay in, in a location that was impacted and receive rental assistance. The question is how many people uh, are going to look for a, a, a long-term permanent location to be at, i.e. up to 18 months. But I don't think, look on your face, I don't think I'm answering the question properly. Damage yeah, so Estimated sure. total damages yeah. of the flooding to Vermont, if you know. Uh, that I don't know. I, I, I do know that, that, that we've got over 500 families or 500 uh, uh, people we're working with right now who have either, either destroyed or substantially damaged homes, if that helps. I think Kevin's asking about a dollar amount, right? I am. Uh, I, I don't have that for you. We can see if that we have something close to that, but right now I don't have that exact number for you. If, when you say Vermont has requested direct housing, yes, does that mean Vermont has requested FEMA trailers or what? what yeah, so direct that? housing, there's a number of different programs incorporating that. Um, Multi-family uh, uh, locations, uh, either, uh, locations that have either three or more units uh, are uh, so that FEMA can lease for those is, is one of the options. Uh, a direct lease where we can find locations to, to lease for people. Or, or the uh, mobile homes uh, or recreational vehicles. They're all options on the table. Okay, Could you confirm for us whether or not the window for the first disaster application is actually closed now, uh, that folks in Addison County didn't make it, uh, and the possibility of a second application? Yes, sir. Uh, so I can confirm that the incident period has closed on the 17th of July. Uh, I can confirm that Addison County didn't meet the, the, the indicators required to be uh, uh, declared as a, as a county for individual assistance. Does it strike you a little odd that a geographical line will determine assistance? That you could go a quarter mile across the Addison County line under Rutland County, and that person is covered? The, the nature of it is that uh, the way the the way the, the law, regulations, and policy are written, we actually work by the county. Uh, and so it's based upon the county line is the way it operates. And what's the likelihood of the second? We were talking about that, I think, last week. You know, maybe try to have another application. Yeah. Is that likely? It, there's two, two things I want to add to what was just uh, mentioned by um, General Roy. Um, the, the period they have notified us, the, the period is closed. Uh, we respectfully disagree and are asking them to reopen uh, it. Uh, at that point in time, it's up to them whether they reopen it and consider uh, some of uh, our arguments for support uh, during a longer period of time. Um, if they disagree at that point, uh, we can appeal, uh, formally appeal uh, then, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, at the same time, uh, we're we're accumulating all of the, the damage uh, that was done in Addison County, specifically in the August storms as well. And we, so we'll see if there's another, a second, uh, another declaration at that point. Um, we believe 
and, and again, we'll make this, this argument that everything is connected. Even though there are different <coughs> storm systems, the first storm uh, really uh, created a lot of havoc in terms of, of culverts and, and uh, so forth and, and saturation of, of the uh, water and, and the ground level. And uh, so at that point, <coughs> we feel uh, that even storms that weren't as significant as the first uh, created just as much damage as a result and just the accumulation of many different storm systems but repeated over over days and uh, and again we'll try and uh, we're going to determine whether we can meet the threshold for another declaration for Addison County as well. Did I miss anything there? Yeah. In terms of that process of figuring out if you do have to file an appeal, is that process at the same place it was last week when we spoke to you, or has anything happened? Nothing has happened in that regard. They they came to their determination to close uh, the period. We were notified of that, I think, yesterday, maybe the day before. And um, so at this point, we're, we're going to be request, formally requesting that they reopen that. Uh, and uh, it isn't an appeal. It's more reopening uh, that, uh, that decision. And then, then go from there. I, I don't know. It's on their time frame. This is in regard to the debris, but what's the state's long-term environmental concern regarding the debris and the importance of getting certain debris cleaned up first on the Tuesdays? Well, on, I'm sorry. What was the last part? Um, I guess if there's like a primary focus of certain degrees that need to be cleaned up on or by a certain date yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying, we would like to get most of the debris um, picked up by the end of the month, by the end of August. Uh, and that includes all the debris we've seen in Barry and Montpelier. And as an aside, um, when we, we look at the totals of uh, the tonnage of debris, um, it's, it's now, at, I'm going to, it's about 1,600 tons, I believe, in Montpelier. Barry has like 3,700 tons uh, that we've uh, we picked up already. Uh, so that number is continuing to grow. Um, the most significant amount is in the Barry area. How has the capacity up in Coventry to the landfill? I know we just expanded it, but. I, I haven't heard uh, that there is a capacity issue there uh, at this point. Governor? Of all the needs in the state right now, how uh, did you determine or did Ernie determine that $100,000 towards the mobile home demolition and removal costs was the best way to, to, to spend this money? Well, again, it's an unmet need. Um, and it's something that we found after Irene uh, that uh, all the costs, uh, depend, you know, with FEMA will we'll, uh, determine how much damage they had. Uh, and uh, if they can't go back into their unit, uh, they will give them a certain amount of money. And it depends on the value of the, the mobile home itself. Um, from there, they're still responsible for uh, deconstruction of that home and moving it off from the rented space. Uh, so that's not included anywhere. Um, that's not something that FEMA reimburses for. Um, so that's when we came uh, and put a program together uh, after Irene to take care of that for them. And we want to do something similar this time around. Because it's, it's just, a, again, for those who are impacted and, and um, really struggling, this is just an added expense that they don't need. Right. And was that a recognition that the amount that FEMA is going to cap the reimbursements to these people is almost certain to not be enough for them to replace their units? Regardless, uh, the, the cap for FEMA uh, is 40, 41,000, 41,000. That's that's all in. But that's not that's not what they reimburse. They reimburse the value of the, the structure itself. So if you have a let's say a mobile home that's worth it's older, uh, it's worth seven, eight thousand. They get seven or eight thousand, uh, so that doesn't come close uh, to replacement. Uh, and then you add the the costs of three or four or five thousand dollars to dispose, deconstruct, and dispose of the unit. Then all the money's gone. So we wanted to do whatever we could to support that, knowing that it's not enough. So you think that hundred thousand dollars may very well support about twenty or twenty-five or so? No, I think that'll. I think we can do it. Uh, I think we can take care of all of them with that amount of money, because we're going to, we're also going to leverage, you know, some of um, 
other organizations uh, for support, whether it's equipment to do it. Um, and things have changed a little bit. We're able to, FEMA will be taking care of uh, the, the debris itself if we can move it to the right of way. So that's changed from Irene. So a little bit of a it's, scale, it's, Yeah, all it's, all it'll, it'll help, right. We can do them with a more efficient process. Governor, the uh, White House has submitted a, I think, a $12 billion FEMA supplemental appropriation bill uh, that Congress will consider when they come back from their August recess. I'm wondering, whatever money Vermont gets from that, will it be also uh, liable for the same kinds of restrictions that the FEMA funds that are available now, or do you anticipate having more flexibility in the use of that money? I think there will have to be more added to the supplemental bill uh, by our congressional delegation to give us the flexibility and the resources we need to fully recover from this or partially recover from this. And uh, so I know they're still working on it. Um, this was just, uh, I think the, the president decided to, uh, to, to put the resources towards making sure that FEMA is whole. And, um, but I, we're hopeful uh, that the delegation will make some inroads um, to try and uh, come up with more uh, resources, dollars, um, to take care of some other ongoing needs. Do you have a sense or maybe an updated sense of how some of uh, Vermont's homeless population has been faring during uh, this, this crisis, and are they eligible for FEMA relief funds as well? Um, we did not distinguish uh, between those who needed assistance uh, because of the flooding they were displaced from their homes from those who were homeless before. So they were able to, to come to the emergency shelters uh, in all the communities that we had set those up. Uh, we have currently, due to uh, lack of, uh, of uh, participation, uh, been, been able to put those on, on uh, not, not completely closed, uh, but on standby. And uh, so, we're not seeing, we weren't seeing the need at that point in time from either those displaced from their home or the homeless population to utilize uh, that, those emergency shelters. Um, so I, we have the general assistance program that is still in effect. Uh, so we're doing all we can uh, to help out. Understood. And do you know if, let's just say, somebody's tent and camping gear and everything was washed away? Are, are they, is that eligible for a, a reimbursement through FEMA? I have, I don't, I don't know. It is, okay. I'll let General Roy. Yes, if, if their personal belongings were impacted by the storm, yes, they are eligible for, for reimbursement from FEMA. And is that, is it just the, like, is that application process in different? Like, I know you have to have, like, nope. a permanent address when you apply that. Uh, no, we have means by which people can, can apply uh, for that, uh, either the Wayne Hunter number or our DRCs. We have nine DRCs all over the state. And I think we're uh, Governor, as far as cleanup day, how is the state going to make sure that aid is dispersed equitably? Like Barry and Montpelier are the classic example yeah. of volunteer effort being very disparate. Again, I, I'm going to let Kate, uh, I think she's going to use their structure under Green Up Day uh, to use all of their their resources to to determine what's needed in the community and then use Sir Vermont as well uh, to try and work together and uh, take care of as much need as possible. Kate? So we're asking towns to step forward um, that have the need. Some towns don't, and that's, that's great, right? Um, but we're asking those towns to step forward we are promoting that this is public space litter. Uh, the litter that's cleaned up will be public space, not construction or flood debris. Um, and we will make sure that everyone is reimbursed appropriately, or we, we will handle the, the um, disposal fees of that public space litter. If there is money left over, um, we will make sure that it is used in a way that helps other towns that might be in need with various other projects, but all flood recovery, public space, litter related. Mm -hmm. I think as well, if you think about this as a day of service in some respect to your community, and it could be, it could be for anything uh, that you might see uh, that um, 
might be, need some assistance. I was down on Route 2 going out of uh, Mount Pillar, uh towards Middlesex, and I saw uh, the debris had been picked up on a lot of the, the residents along the way, but there's still debris left, right? Um, so I'm thinking, why don't you get a rake, ask the homeowner if they'd like you to clean that up, and, and just present it a little bit better, get them beyond uh, the, uh, the impact of the flooding. Uh, so they can move forward. But it can be as myopic as that. It could be a neighborhood. Uh, it could be a whole community. Uh, it could be uh, going out on a, on a trail, picking that up. Whatever you feel uh, you can do uh, to assist and get us you know, to a point where we're, again, welcoming people uh, to Vermont and uh, showcasing what we have to offer. Thank you all again and again. Ernie, thank you so much for all you've done. Would thank you like you. to say anything? Uh, well, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank 802 Subaru and Dave Birmingham for hosting this. Please give Dave a hand. I live in Massachusetts, but again, Vermont is very close to my heart. I have a house here, and you guys got a great governor. Pictures. Absolutely. <laughs> There's another 100,000 on this. Let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, thank you.